Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use everything you've learned about JavaScript so far to make this little application that I'm playing here on the screen. This is a coin flipper program. Uh, you can see drawing on the canvas on this HTML page, I have either a gold or a silver colored, gray colored circle with an H for heads or a T for tails. These represent coins. In order to complete this program, you should know a few basics about JavaScript. You should know how to create variables and assign value to them. You should know how to create a custom function and then call that function. You should know how to pass arguments into the functions. And finally, you should know how to make random numbers. OK, let's get started. For the students in my classes, I've provided a starter file for them. That starter file has an HTML page, as you see here. And it has a little bit of styling in it, a body selector and canvas selector. It has on the body of the page a canvas element, as you see here. It has the ID of my canvas, a width of 600 and a height of 400. And the rest of the code that you see here from line 20 down is all JavaScript. It's contained within a script tag in the HTML page. And there are two variables, canvas and C, to get us started. Those variables we've learned in class are always required when you're going to draw on a canvas element using JavaScript on an HTML page. I also have a couple functions already created. I have the flip coin function, the draw heads function, and the draw tails function. Now, if you recall from watching my sample program, I was clicking a button to cause the program to run. So the first thing we need to do is add a button to our page. Uh, that's a simple button tag in the HTML in the body area. And it is a type button. And it has an on click event of flip coin. Now, flip coin is the function that I just showed you down below. And so that means whenever we click the button, we're going to call that function. Inside the opening and closing tag of the button, we want to put the words click here to flip a coin. One other thing you might want to do here is right after the canvas, put a break tag. That's a BR tag. That will cause the button to go down below the canvas. If you'd like to test the program, go ahead and open it in a browser. You'll see the canvas area, which has a black outline around it, and a button right below it. If you click that button, however, nothing happens yet because we haven't coded that yet. All right, now back to the editor where we're going to finish writing our code. You can see here in the starter file, I've included comments that explain what I'm doing in each step. The first thing we're going to do is declare two variables, capital W will be the width of the canvas, and we're going to assign to it canvas.width. That is a property of the canvas element that we have on the page. And then variable capital H is going to stand for canvas.height. The width and the height are built into the canvas. You should note that both of these variables are in the global scope. That means they're not inside any other function. Now let's move down to the flip coin function. This is the function again that is called every time we click that button. The first thing we need to do when we click the button is to create a random number and store it in a variable called flip. So let's create a variable and call it flip. We want to give it the value of a random number, either 0 or 1. 0 will stand for heads, and 1 will stand for tails. As we've learned in a previous lesson, in order to create a random number, a whole number, we're going to use two math functions built into JavaScript. Math.floor creates a whole number from our decimal number, and math.random creates a decimal number that is something between 0 and less than 1. In order to get the range of numbers we want, we're going to multiply math.random by 2. That will give us a random number between 0 and 1. Now, in order to test our random number generator, let's log what we've just created to the console. To do that, we use console.log. And inside the parentheses, let's put flip. That's our variable that's holding the number 0 or 1. Let's go ahead and test our program. Remember, you need to always save your work 
and then refresh the browser. Refresh the browser, and in this case, we need to open the console, press F12. Over on the far right, we'll see the console. When I click this button, I should start to see a number appearing here. Every time I click it, I get either a zero or a one, and it looks like it's working perfectly. Back to our code. A big part of this program is learning how to write an if statement. An if statement is one of the most basic control structures that you can write in a programming language. It allows you to provide different code dependent on different conditions in your application. So in this case, we're going to ask if the value of flip equals zero. If that's true, we're going to draw the heads coin. Else, if it's not zero, we're going to draw tails. We're going to place an else here. You note that I have curly braces. And those represent the two parts of the if-else clause. Really important that whenever you open a curly brace, you always close it. You can see I have that here. Inside the first clause of the if statement, if flip equals zero, we're going to call the draw heads function. And else, if flip is not zero, we will call draw tails. And remember, the draw heads and draw tails custom functions have already been created down here below. Now, when we call these functions, we're going to provide some arguments. We're going to provide the X location, the Y location, and the color of the coin that we're going to draw. For the draw heads, we're going to draw it at X 200 and Y 200, and we're going to give it a color gold. For draw tails, we're going to draw the coin at 400 X, 200 Y, and give it a color of silver. Now, as we learned in a previous lesson, when you call a function, such as draw heads, and you provide three arguments, there have to be three arguments or parameters here inside the head of the function definition to receive that input. So we're going to create three arguments here. We're going to call them x loc, comma y loc, and color. Let's do the same for draw tails. x loc, y loc, and color. Now inside each function, we're going to use all that knowledge we have about how to draw on the canvas to draw a circle at a particular location with a particular radius and a particular color. I'm just going to go ahead and do that quickly because this should be real familiar to you. Now let me pause here. When I get ready to draw the circle, I use c.arc. And instead of putting in actual numbers, I'm going to use the arguments of above. x loc, y loc, and the radius as listed right here should be 100. So we'll put that here. That's the next argument for the arc function. Then we use the start angle and then 2 times math.pi. And those five arguments will create a circle. Now let me add the rest of the code. There you go. That's how you draw a circle of a particular color in a particular location on the canvas. In addition to drawing the circle, we also want to draw a big black H in the middle of the coin. To do that, we need to change the fill style to a different color. Black will work. Set the font. And then in the fill text function, we're going to put a letter H, and we have to provide an X location and Y. We'll put the X loc and Y loc. That will place the letter right in the middle of the coin. Now the draw tails function will be really similar to draw heads, so we can copy most of this. Control C will copy. Now I have the draw tails function, and we see all that we have to do is change the H here to a T. The color will all automatically be changed because when we call draw tails, we will be passing in silver instead of gold. Okay, let's test our program. Again, save your work and refresh the browser. Now when I click the button, 
I see that I got a one over here in the console, so that means it should be tails. And sure enough, I got a silver coin on the right side of the canvas with a big T in the middle of it. The T isn't quite in the right place, but we can adjust that later. I click again, I got another one, so another tails. Oh, there you go, we got heads. Now one thing that we notice is that the two coins are persisting on the canvas each time I click the button. What we want to do is clear the canvas in between each click of the button so that when we draw the coin, we draw it on a fresh, clean, white canvas. Here's how you do that. At the very top of the draw heads function, simply add c.clearRect. And this will clear anything within the rectangle that we define. We need four arguments, zero, zero, and in this case, capital W and capital H. Remember, W and H represent the width and the height of the canvas. Let's copy this line and put it at the very top of the draw tails function as well. Now by adding that, let's see what difference that makes when we run the program. Refresh the browser, click the button, we see we get a heads, and as soon as we get a tails, we see that the heads has disappeared, and now the tails is drawn there. Perfect. This is working as expected. I'm going to let you adjust the numbers and the spacing a little bit so that you can get these two circles uh, drawn a little bit further apart, and these letters, the letter H and T, should be right in the center of the circle. I'll leave that to you to figure out how to do. Okay, I've made a few adjustments to my code. You can see now the uh, coins are drawn uh, with a little bit of space in between them, and I put the H and the T right in the middle of the circle. Let me show you a few more advanced versions of this program. Here I have this similar program, and when I click the button, in addition to having the coins drawn on the canvas, you'll see down below I also have what I call the stats or statistics. I'm showing the total number of flips, and how many were heads and how many were tails. Of course, when you add up heads and tails, they should equal total flips. And as I continue to do that, we see the statistics are being displayed down below. An even more advanced version here allows me to not only keep track of the total flips and the number of heads and tails, but also the percentage of heads and the percentage of tails. So what I want you to do is create a new function called show stats. And every time you click the button, you will not only draw heads and draw tails, you'll also call show stats. And in that show stats function, you should create a string that includes all this information. Of course, you're going to have to have some variables that keep track of the number of flips and the number of heads and tails. You're going to have to do a little math to get the percentages right. Uh, but I think you can figure that out. It's a little bit of a challenge. And um, I'm not going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to give you that challenge and let you figure out how to do it. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you next time.